Hi. There's many factors to getting canopies like this, or like this. I'm going to take you through the process of spawning this tub and talk to you about my thought process. I'm going to be using a 20 quart gasket tub. I teach you how to make these in a different video. For my spawn, I've got some gourmet mushrooms right here. My spawn's a little bit old, but it'll work just fine. The substrate I'm using is just standard cocoa coir and vermiculite. For a 20 quart tub, I use 4 quarts of substrate and 2 quarts of spawn. So this is 2 quarts of spawn right here, and I'll be adding 4 quarts of substrate to the bin. I like to start just by sanitizing some things. I also like to spray down the inside of the tub. So I've got this nice little scoop. It's a exactly a quart. I found this on the side of the road. You can just use like a wide mouth jar. To start, add three quarts of substrate into your mono tub. And then go ahead and grab a fourth quart. And you're going to set this one aside for later. Alright, so inside the tub, just level it out a little bit. And you want to grab your spawn and break it up. Now in my older video I talked about adding water to this to rehydrate the grains. After experimenting with that more I found it's not really necessary. I didn't notice a difference. So I've stopped doing that since. Once you get your grains broken up, just dump it right on top of uh, the cocoa coir. Now at this point in its life cycle, the mycelium is pretty contamination resistant. You don't need to be wearing gloves or anything, but uh, since I like to collect spores from my samples and I want the spores to be clean, I'm going to go ahead and sanitize my hands again just to keep the inside of the tub as clean as possible. and you're going to want to let your hands fully dry before you touch your mycelium where the alcohol can damage it. Okay now so we've got three quarts of substrate and two quarts of grain inside of the tub right now and all I do at this stage is I mix it as thoroughly as possible. So I'm going to break up the grains and break up any chunks of substrate I find and then go ahead and mix them together. Now at this stage if you start to smell anything off, like any sour smells or unpleasant smells, then that's probably a good sign you've got some bacteria going. And if you do have bacteria, then you're going to want to throw away the entire tub and start again with some different spawn. So when you're mixing, it's important to get down into the corners here and on the edges. So what I like to do is I like to pull it away from the corners, then grab a handful and throw it in. So I, I'll go ahead and do that to all the corners. Because you often uh, either forget grains in the corners or there's a lack of grains in the corners. And neither are, neither are ideal. 
and make sure you do it along the edges as well. I like to utilize this twisting technique where I scoop all the way down to the bottom of the tub, pull up the substrate and I let it fall out of my hand. And that tends to get a really good even mix. So I'd like to talk about my um, theory, theories on getting a good pin set, which leads to a good canopy. Um, I hear a lot of different things. I hear a lot of different things being said about what causes a good canopy and what you need to do for a good pin set. Some of them seem evidence-based and other ones don't, but in my opinion the most important factor is to make sure that it colonizes at a even rate across the entire substrate and that it the mycelium reaches the surface at the same time. What I like to do at this point, now that it's well mixed, it's not packed down yet, so I'm going to start on the edges and pack it down quite firmly on the edges. This is to prevent side pinning. And if you don't do this, it will side pin. Um, a lot of people say liners are designed to prevent side pins. I haven't had very good experience using them for those purposes. I find that packing the edges down like this is really the best method to prevent side pinning. So once you get the edges pretty well packed down like this, Take the loose dirt from the middle and just kind of push it over. All over the edges you just pack down. And go ahead, go around again and pack it down. And once you have all the edges packed down like that, you can start moving to the center using your entire palm to keep it flat. You can also use like a patty press or something to keep it as a tool to flatten it. The goal is to get a level surface at the end. Because I use vermiculite in my substrate, I can pack it down pretty tightly. If you're using only coco coir for your substrate without vermiculite, you're going to want to pack it down a little less dense. If you see there's any divots or mounds around, you can go ahead and just flatten them out and then pack it down. And the final thing I like to do on this layer is just go around the edges one more time, just really lightly, to make sure there's no like loose material there. And at this point, you should have a, a nice level surface, reasonably compacted down. Um, now we're going to add the final quart of substrate to the top. This is, a lot of people call this a casing, it is not a casing. Pseudo casing could be an appropriate term for it, a lot of people call it a top layer. Uh, all it really does is it holds the moisture in when the mycelium is colonizing the majority of the block and it promotes upwards rhizomorphic growth, at least as far as I, I'm aware. So what I like to do with this top layer is just get it evenly spread and so you cover up all the grains and then do a similar process to what you did on the layer below. Start by packing the edges. This doesn't have to be packed as firmly as the layer below, but it is, in, it is good to get it nice and evenly compacted down. So once, you have, once you've gone around the edges, you can go ahead and take your flat palm and move to the middle and give that a nice even compression. And ideally, it's, the substrate will be the same thickness all the way across, which means that once the majority of the block colonizes underneath the top layer, it will all start growing upwards at the same time. Your tub should basically turn completely white within a day when all of the mycelium reaches the surface at the same time. And then that will cause a very even pin set to be formed and give you a nice canopy. And I think that's the biggest factor there is into getting a, a good pin set in your tub, apart from finding a good genetic line that works in your environmental conditions. So once you get this nicely packed down, I like to just take a little paper towel 
wipe off the dirt from the edges. If you notice there's like a corner not packed down, just go ahead and pack that down. Make sure you get these inside corners too. All right, and that's it. Go ahead and put the lid on, throw some filters on it. And I'd like to talk about uh, fruiting conditions for just one moment. A lot of people like to put uh, solid tape over the holes while the tub is colonized and then colonizing and then remove it and replace it with filters for the fruiting condition. I find that's completely unnecessary in the majority of cases unless you have a very low relative humidity in your growing area. In that case, it can be advantageous to cover the holes and even to partially cover the holes with a solid tape during fruiting conditions. But for the majority of climates and the majority of the year, you should be perfectly fine by putting, by only using micropore tape on the holes and not doing anything different for the colonization period. One more note on fanning and misting. I don't do either of those. I think if you do have to fan or mist, it signifies that your monotub is not correctly dialed in for the environmental conditions that it is in. The point of a monotub is to cycle the air naturally using physics, and it also regulates the humidity inside of the tub automatically. You shouldn't be having to add humidity and cycle the air. Uh, in my mind, those are just contamination vectors and you're just blowing dirty air into your tub that doesn't have to be in there. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Make sure you check the links in the descriptions if you want to know where I get any of my supplies. Or if you want to check out my other social media, like my Instagram where I post pictures like this and this. Alright, thanks guys. Take it easy.